Boom blast. And I think my correct mic is on as well, which also helps a lot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that does help. Aloha, Sheldon. I'm John Shabby Hill. <laughs> and I am Sheldon Alexander. And this is You Killed It, the podcast about the challenge. We were just talking about the movie Aloha starring Bradley Cooper, Rachel McAdams, and Emma Stone in a troubling casting decision and a problematic casting decision. And that's why I did the traditional island greeting for you, Sheldon. See, I thought it was because of my background on this Zoom feed. Well, that's, you know, we'll that's also ahead. for our YouTube uh, viewers. You know, like I try, I, I try to do it for, for everyone. You know, I that's try fair. to keep it open. That's fair. And a good reminder too, we never really do it off the front end, but huge shouts to all the people following and listening or watching, however you tune into the pod, however you stumbled upon it here. We appreciate that. But yes, YouTube video is a thing. Audio version is a thing. However you want to listen, we got you covered. Yeah. It's a you killed it podcast. That's right. And I just, I appreciate all our listeners. We got a lot of listener comments this week. I got a lot of excited ones last night, which we'll get to when we get to. You and I okay. are going to, you're going to love it because okay. some, some were just like straight up DMs. So, and like you weren't CC'd. So it's exciting. It's exciting for both of us. It's exciting. Can for I just me read to have one? Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. There's one on YouTube from Hans Slick Rick is the is the name. Love the and name. If you remember back to last week's pod, we were we were in the sillies early. I don't and know. What you're I talking said, about. Super randomness going on. And one of the things I said was, let us know if we're going too far off or if people enjoy this. And uh, Hans Slick Rick just says, keep it random, my guy. We're here <laughs> for it. <laughs> oh. I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> thank you, See, Hans Slick Rick, but don't <laughs> don't invite us. Don't don't encourage us to go down the uh, the rabbit hole because we will. I'll say this much: it's not something that we plan for. It all depends on the, the schedule where you catch us in the day. There's a whole lot of different factors that go into it, and the afternoon that I've been having, I mean, woo, let's go. Challenge episode four. Woo. This was a great episode. I really enjoyed it. Like okay. a lot. Of, this might have been my favorite episode of the season. Okay. Okay. Let's start at the beginning though, Sheldon. That's usually the best place to start. <laughs> Funny how that works. Huh. Weird. We're storytellers. Um, so we're having sort of the aftermath of the previous episode. I just want to say off the top, I think Big T and Jeremiah could be a good team. That was, they, they were one of the combos coming out of last week's episode. Yep. And also in confessional, Priscilla says that the rookies want to see the veteran Alliance crumble. They're all aware of it by now. And the, all I could think was maybe make it happen, guys, like stop calling each other out <laughs> in deliberations. Yeah, I mean, it's they're caught off guard, right? Because they don't really know how the game goes. They don't really know how the game is played. And so that affects just exactly what's going down so far. They don't know how to flip it. And really, honestly, the way to, to flip it would be to have one of the rookie teams win or the yeah. rookie team win. That's kind of the only way now that they could change it. But I mean, yeah, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. You mentioned Big T, right? And, yes. you know, were you surprised at the whole kind of vibes between Big T and Logan? Because it's, it's a vibe, as it is. Kids say. It, I was interested that Big T was like, yeah, I have a bit of a crush on Logan, and I think he knows. Not only does he know, I think he's feeling it too. Like, I, fa- I don't know about you. I found his body language very strong. Like, when they were sitting in that cabana, Mm -hmm. There was a point where they're sitting side by side and his hand is almost on her leg. Yeah. I was like, big T you got to grab that hand. Like that hand is, (laughs) that hand is there on purpose. You know, there's a thing going on, but to me, the thing to me, yes, the, the body language, the eyes, but then like the accents. Oh yeah. The mixture of the accents. That's just a combination. That's just like, okay, I see what we're doing here. I see what we're doing here. 
they're both quite attractive people too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about it all the time, very attractive cast. And we saw it a little bit later on in the episode. I won't say they're as attractive as Amber and Jeremiah. Cause no. that was just like, Ooh. damn, that's a, that's a couple right there. Steamy. Yeah. Um, a couple not doing too well. Josh and Fessy. I love that. You just called Josh and Fessy a couple. It's a bromance at least. <laughs> no. Oh, it's a Rocky bromance. It is. Hey, there's ups and downs in any relationship, right? Ups and downs. That's but true. They're talking about being on the same side. Fessy is worried about Amber, which should he be worried about Amber? I don't think so. I don't think well, so either. You know what? To, to answer your question, I don't think so, but I understand why he is. Okay. Okay. That's fair. I, I know I've quoted this before. And I know I'm about to get a reaction from you. I'm going to quote the Bible, Sheldon Alexander. Wow. wow. <laughs> okay. There's a line in the Bible. I can't remember the chapter and verse, okay. but it's the guilty flee where none pursue. In other words, if you feel guilty about something, you'll do too much. Mm. You will react too strongly because your conscience isn't clear. And in your head, you think about all the things that you believe you deserve happen to you should happen to you as a result of your actions. So Fessy, to apply this biblical scripture to Fessy's behavior. This is a turn I didn't think the podcast would ever take. And and especially coming off of last week. Wow, we're just all over the place. So please continue, continue. Listen, Hans <laughs> Slick Rick asked for random. And what you get is Bible <laughs> verses. Wow. So okay. what Fessy's doing here is he feels guilty about how he behaved last season, particularly toward Amber. So he's doing too much. He's okay. reacting because in his head, he thinks, ah, I fucked over Amber. I know I fucked over Amber. I have shit coming from Amber because that's what I deserve. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's reacting too strongly. And he's thinking if the roles were reversed, I would be coming back for me too. Exactly. I got you. I got you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Exactly. The one thing that I don't understand, and I can't believe I'm going to say this multiple times in this episode. Are you also going to quote the Bible? No, <laughs> but I am stunned that I agree with Josh because Josh brings up the point. He's like, dude, relax. I got everything covered. And even if you don't believe that at bare minimum, the fact that someone else the only there's only two other people. If he only trusts Josh and he trusts Casey, even if he doesn't trust Amber, Amber is Josh's partner. Yeah. Amber is a good partner to have. So if you don't win, but Amber and Josh win, it's essentially the same thing. So why would you then try to get rid of your alliance members? Good partner who also wants to work with you. That makes no sense doing too much fessy. And I mean, yeah, it's just messy fessy as we hear again, doing too much, but also it seems like fessy. There's a lot going on with fessy. Cause I did actually peep the after show mm -hmm. and it was like fessy, Amanda, Michelle, there's some, they're alluding to maybe some uh, shenanigans between Michelle and fessy post uh, post exit and it was actually kind of funny because Amanda jumps in and she's like you know uh, I'm paraphrasing here but this is essentially what she said she's like you know Fessy's kind of like Thanksgiving dinner you know you, you have the buffet and everyone's kind of picking and you take a little bit of everything but you don't take too much because you don't really want to have too much but you just pass them along after you have a little bit it's like wow okay and they, wow. they laughed they chuckled but I bring all that up to just say Fessy's always doing the most. Fessy is always doing too much. And he doesn't, even if he is worried about Amber, he should be listening to Josh. That's my Yeah. Opinion. Or at least be like, hey, like I'm having an emotional response to this. Mm -hmm. I should listen to a third party who I trust. You know? And either you trust Josh and you rock with Josh or you don't. But I think what we're learning is Fessy is about Fessy. Well, I don't think we're learning that. that. 
I, no, but I, mean, I think we already knew that. <laughs> but the way that this episode went down, I didn't see that playing out in no. that way. Because it's so early in the game. There's no reason for you to shoot your shot at Amber right now. Amber, no. as long as she's partnered with Josh, isn't going to shoot a shot at you. That's not going to happen. Yeah. So we should we should talk about another couple on the show, Devin and Kyle. Yep. What's their name? Uh, Dial. Yeah. Which is just like what what's going on? These guys. Yeah. But anyway, Kyle says that Devin is his best friend, which is super cute. <laughs> and uh, they're talking about how like. Uh, Kyle is going to start doing the Corey thing about talking about how he's there for his children because his fiance is pregnant and Devin sort of like in broad strokes critical of people who have kids and Kyle says I was going to ask you to be my kid's godfather and Devin <laughs> says, that's a hard no Just well played funny. by Kyle well played it was it's funny because like last season Kyle and Devin we talked about this we're playing the same game and clearly got along but like we haven't seen such a like firm declaration of their friendship. And like, I totally see it. Kyle says later uh, in confessional later in the episode that they get along because they're both dickheads. But like, I think they're just like at the same age, sort of doing the same thing in life, share a lot of the same opinions, which again, we saw a lot last episode or two episodes ago when they were both working to defuse the Tory and big T beef. Mm hmm. Right. Like they, they just five. Yeah. You know. I'm going to be really honest with you. And I don't know if you noticed, cause you spent a lot of time talking about this conversation without bringing it up. And it also makes me wonder if I'm the only one who notices. Cause I feel like I can't be, but, and maybe it's because of the way I watch it, but let me, let me break this down. Okay. As I was watching the show, right. I, obviously I'm listening, I'm watching, but I'm also like, typing things out right i'm like writing notes like just so that who knows when we're actually going to tape so sometimes i need to write down my thoughts you know while i'm watching right mm -hmm. as i looked up during this conversation the only thing i noticed was a huge bulge from whatever type of shorts or speedo or whatever devin was wearing and I would just looked up and I was like, hold on, like what, what's happening here? Like, this is too much. And they didn't acknowledge it, which made me think that they did it on purpose as like some gag or whatever. But it was like, I can't be the only one that noticed this. And I think it was just because of the way, again, that I'm watching it where like I'm listening, my head's down because I'm like writing something out. And then I looked up and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. OK, that was that's that's a lot. That's a lot. So. I don't know if you recall this, but there was one season where apparently Devin was always naked and apparently okay. all the women were impressed oh. with him. Oh. And he's obviously the type that wears a Speedo. He also has an OnlyFans account. <laughs> so I think he knows what he's packing. Uh -huh. And it's funny. I noticed it too. But what I was more distracted about are how white Kyle's teeth are <laughs> and like oh, we've man. made comments before about or maybe I have because you're a, a nicer human being than I am but like Nani's veneers Kyle also has veneers that are like too white and like just like slightly too big for his back yeah um I was just baffled by how quickly we went from Bible verses to OnlyFans. And Listen. I don't really, I'd like to find out the other podcast that has that range. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's, you know, that's fair. It's, there's a lot of breadth to this podcast. There's a lot of breadth to what you killed it brings to the table we're definitely going to talk about 90s music in this episode too so are we okay so oh, yeah. let's, let's keep things moving though let's keep things moving so we get a conversation with amber and casey they're talking game but they don't want to call it the big brother alliance anymore like uh they don't like they feel like giving it a name actually makes it into a bigger thing than it is which i actually agree with yeah because in theory it's really just three people and then Amber yeah. came. So yeah. to actually call it that gives it a bigger target 
than is really necessary. But really what's more important to me here, two things. Amber is worried about the fact that Fessy says that they carried her last year or that's how Mm -hmm. she feels or she heard that from Fessy in some way. But now she thinks Fessy is being more genuine, which is hilarious. Like that whole sentence makes me laugh because one, who cares who carried you to a million dollars? The bottom line is you won. Yeah. So like, who cares who, who carried you there and who cares if Fessy thinks he talked, he did. We said doing too much Fessy. If we go back to last season was the king of doing too much. Cause he did too much all the way out of winning the challenge. Yeah. But then two Fessy being more genuine now. Um, uh, I don't, no. I don't know how to like where, what? I haven't seen proof of that. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a day to day thing. Maybe he's a little more open. Maybe it's something that doesn't come across well in the edits. I'm maybe. with you though. I haven't seen it. I have to tell you. So in the past, I've been critical of Casey. I don't know why I said her name so weird. Critical of Casey mm-hmm. where I haven't thought that she was the smartest or the most entertaining. Like, I, I recognize that she's a good competitor. Yeah. But, like, did she get smarter this season or is she just better at confessionals? Because I agree with what she, everything she has to say in this. I think she's more confident. I think okay. that's all it is, okay. right? It's just so after so many seasons, because remember, she was on Big Brother, right? And then now coming mm-hmm. over to the challenge this is what, probably her third season of the challenge at least? Yeah. So it just, breeds more confidence you you go home i'm sure she watches the episode to see how she comes across and yeah you realize that you do better in confessionals you get more airtime more airtime probably means you're coming back more right yep. so i just feel like she's a lot more confident and that is coming through because the ability of it's it's rare right when you think of who we deem as good characters or funny characters or the entertaining characters it's the ability to have a conversation and then have them cut to the confessional where you're countering exactly what you're saying in the conversation <laughs> and she did that so well here and you're yeah. right that's not something we would have seen from her last season or the season before so totally i kind of had the same reaction where i was like oh, okay i i see you casey i see you playing the game Speaking of playing the game, the daily competition is undercover comms, which is yeah. pretty straightforward. One agent from each pair has to, agent, cast member from each pair, has to hang upside down like that old American Gladiators competition yeah. and move up and down or back and forth on this track, reading out what is essentially Morse code and transmit the answer key to their partner who's back on the beach over a microphone. That partner then has to run a short distance to find the numbers to undo the combination lock. They have each three, the, each pair has three combos to do. Each time you get to use it against uh, an opposing team and eliminate them. And when you get your third one down, you eliminate everyone except your partner. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, definitely. The, the important thing is that Coriel and Michelle are the only all-rookie team. So all the vets have agreed we're going to get rid of them first so we can throw them in, Mm -hmm. which is a good plan. Makes sense. It's the easiest plan. It's them appearing to still stick with their uh, whole vet alliance thing. We'll see how long that lasts. But, I mean, yeah, it makes sense on paper. Um, Which team stuck out to you? in this first heat, which team impressed you and which one were you disappointed in? So a couple things. One, I'm over the Huey freaking out before every single challenge. Like, yep. just stop it. My it's guy, it. did you not know what show you were coming on? You're going to fall from heights into water. It is the but, most but, basic thing that happens on the show. But you can be scared. I get it, but not, he, he's going over the top. He's being extra. Um, but the other thing that stood out to me and Berna was not really in this episode at all, but she made an interesting point that I never really thought of where she said, you know, dashes and dots and hearing everyone yell dash and dots is throwing her off because she would normally say points and lines, just such mm-hmm. a simple thing. But 
you know, you're up there, you're dangling 30 feet in the air above water. You're probably like the slightest thing could throw you off in terms of trying to uh, keep your memory going. Right. Um, but in terms of a team that, sorry, you're going to say something, my bad. I was just going to say also in fairness to her, she's under pressure and communicating in what is not her first language. Also true. That's yeah, tough. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. No, for sure. I also think too, the, the biggest thing that stood out to me though, to answer your question, sorry, um, was Josh. I was surprised at how well Josh was doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, right? Yeah. Right? And Josh and Amber won their heat. Like they, they were on the ball. They communicated well. Josh kept his cool. He, he made one small misstep where he took out Jeremiah and uh, Big T first before Michelle and Corey. But then he explained it in confessional. He's like, I know every other veteran team is going to take out Michelle and Corey. He's like, I'm worried about Big T and Jeremiah. So I wanted to take them off the board because I knew someone was going to get Michelle and Corey. And he's right. CT is next in line and he takes them out. So totally yeah, I was, I was impressed with Amber and Josh. Yeah, totally makes sense. But the drama kind of really comes in the next round, mm-hmm. right? And a first, first we start off with some jokes from your man's Gabo, who <laughs> continues to just be jokes and somehow just patting Nanny on the head or Nani. I don't know why I said Nanny, um, but, you know, patting her on the head, which is just hilarious. But here's a whole game plan heading into the second round. The second round strategy from the vets was essentially to let whoever was doing well win and then hand the power over to them. And right away, I was like, there's no way that's going to (laughs) work. Again, sounds good on paper, but there's no way that's going to work. Did you buy that from the beginning? I I did not. Things did not break down the way I thought they would, but I also was like, "Mm, I can't imagine everyone being like, I think people will do that to an extent, but I was like, "Mm, there's still some like, beefs within this veteran alliance right like people you know do not like the um the big brother alliance that's trying to shed their name you know like there's i was like "Eh." as people keep saying there's a lot of snakes in this group correct but it turned out that the snake possibly was Kyle Mm. on Devin because Kyle eliminates Devin just when things are coming down to the the very end. Yeah. So a lot of things here. First off, I don't know what Kyle was doing. And at first I'm going to give my actual take and then I'll give the take that Kyle gave on the, the after show. Okay. Right. So Kyle flips on Devin. Is he a snake? I would say yes, because he kind of even said that, Mm -hmm. right? Like he kind of even said, he's like, oh, I just really wanted to win. So Mm -hmm. that is kind of a snake move because the game plan was whoever was ahead, you let Mm -hmm. them go. And you Mm -hmm. felt like Devin was ahead of you. So you took him out. So yes, he is a snake. But there's also other layers to it, right? Because he messed up on multiple levels. First off, Amanda gave him the last one first so not only did you snake your best friend in the house but then you didn't even win yeah so that's another mess up then i think he did it on purpose because i feel like he got shook by hearing the reaction to what he did to Devin, and then he was Mm -hmm. like oh no there's too much of a target on my back here i probably shouldn't win that's what i think happened here but i think Devin just did or not Devin, Kyle, pardon me, did too much to flip on on Devin. That's a terrible move. But he explained it. Do you want to know what what he said? He said that he said on the after show Mm -hmm. that basically he didn't want to upset Fessy. He thought that him and Fessy were in a good spot so far at this point. He said, one, he really wanted to win. But two, he didn't want to he didn't want to take out Fessy. And he had a deal with Esther because they were right beside each other. So very early on, Esther was about to take out his team, take out Amanda. And they tur- he turned to her and said, listen, don't take me out. I won't take you out. 
So they mm-hmm. made a little deal. Okay. And then he also didn't want to take out Fessy because he thought after years of him and Fessy kind of butting heads, they're finally in like a good place. And he was afraid that eventually Fessy was going to win one. And so he thought Fessy would owe him. Okay. Snake, 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 doing too much. Doing way too much. And I like there is some logic to what Kyle's saying, but I think it's faulty logic. Because the attitude has to be, just as Josh said earlier in the episode, we've got the Veteran Alliance, and then from my perspective within the Veteran Alliance, mm-hmm. I've got me and my big brother alliance. Like, I've got my core four. Kyle, your core is Devin. So if you're yeah. in a position where you and Devin are the final two in a heat, that's that's the ideal. Like that's And that's also, perfect. Fessy... Sure, Fessy might be salty, but first of all, Fessy's probably com- coming after you at some point anyway. It's also really easy to explain. Like, if Fessy is mad about it, you say, Hey, man, it was between you and my guy, Devin. And like, anyone would be like, Oh, yeah, okay. Just like, no one's expecting Fessy to turn on Casey or yeah. Nani to turn on Casey or Amanda to turn on Ashley. Like, there's certain pairings. Mm-hmm. That people know, like, that's the ride or die. And, like, I think you can explain away any sort of, like, situation by saying, hey, like, listen, no offense to you, but if, if I can benefit my guy, Devin, I'm going to do that over you every time. Nothing yeah. personal, but, like, he's my guy. Just, like, no one's expecting Corey and Nelson to turn on each other. Like, if yeah. two other best friends in the house, those guys... If they have the opportunity, they're going to push each other forward. They're not going to turn on each other. So he definitely blew it. He, and you're right. He blew it two times over. I mean, maybe even three times over. Like, it's insane. Move. It's a crazy move by Kyle. And, and I'll be honest, when the reaction from the other castmates watching, when that was going down, I was kind of like, they're going overboard. But when yeah. you take the step back and you take it all in, oh, nah, that's a terrible, terrible move from Kyle. And again, let's add this all up. Not only did he screw his boy, Devin, but then he doesn't even win. So that's yep. two. He also couldn't even use a walkie talkie. And good thing Amanda had a loud enough voice to still help him. And then he still messed up at the end. And on top of that, you did all this for Fessy. Yeah. The guy who you know on record, you can't trust. He's a wild card that might do anything. And we saw that play out. So, yeah. Just disastrous play. Like, there's no other way to... And, like, I like Kyle. I think you like Kyle. But just... Man. Just a disaster. CT, who hasn't said much, said it perfectly, right? Every single year, Kyle does the same thing. And people then want to act surprised. You can never trust Kyle. You and, you can't. know, um, I guess it was last season. Or, no, it was two seasons ago when they're in the bunker. Mm-hmm. You might remember the first night CT pulled Kyle aside and was like, man, you got to stop making alliances with everyone. Like you are destroying your long-term reputation. And I would say of the Kyle, Devin, I'm not going to call them dial. Of the Kyle and Devin <laughs> alliance, CT is definitely an ally of theirs. Not their priority, but like they get along with CT. Like he is a, a trusted advisor in the circumstance. What if we call them Kevin? <laughs> now that's better <laughs> Kevin I would call him Kevin uh, for sure I'm, I'm happy to do that <laughs> so was, again though I was going to say I need to know what music was being played in the club well I happen to know I'm so glad what? you asked hold on yes. what <laughs> yo okay and I want people to know this I did not know you were going to say that yeah well we had the beauty two- of this podcast Okay, let's go. This is what I want to surprise you with. So we had oh, two I'm so excited. I love it. That blew up my phone, mm-hmm. like as it's happening in real time, to tell me what the music was. But I want you to guess. Oh, there's, can, I, can it be multiple choice at least? Yeah. I'll give you three guesses. Hold on. But there's got to be some kind of hint. Like it can't just be like 50 Cent in the club. Okay. Uh, First hint. Okay. Okay. This song came out when we were in high school. 
Okay, that doesn't narrow it down at all. I just narrowed it down to a five-year span. That's huge. Do you want another it... hint? Yes, please. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I'm trying to think of a good hint that won't totally give it away. It, uh... <laughs> okay, put this. Uh, it <laughs> purely, it's purely pop music. Purely pop music. So I'm going to go with like Britney. Um, what were, what were Britney? Britney had some bops when we were in high school because she like then connected with Pharrell at one point. What was that? Yeah. I'm a, was that Slave for You? Boom, 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 I'll boom, tell you. Boom, boom. That was a bop. No? Not Britney. I mean, it is a bop. Not Britney <laughs> Spears, but Britney Spears a Jace. Oh. It's a boy so band. So that's got to be, oh, a boy band. A boy band pop band so that's okay so we're talking backstreet boys or in sync i'm gonna go with in sync mm-hmm. jay timberlake yep um you go that's the right band um group. uh okay i'm trying to guess which in sync song would have been out around that time that kind of you know had some oh what was that song they had a song with nelly that was a big song i'm pretty sure that was a neptune's one was that girlfriend? It was girlfriend, but that's not the song. <sighs> so I'll tell you, I've got to give credit to our listeners. Our self-appointed foreign correspondent, a deep okay. off and running some errands, both reached out to tell me that the song was NSYNC's I Want You Back. What? I don't even <laughs> know. Like, hold on. I I need a bigger banger than that. Right. Like, there's so many other songs that i would have chosen like over that yeah like that no that's that's a waste that's a waste of a club scene but it's okay <laughs> Did, you know what really got me excited because it looked like they were having a lot of fun they were all grooving they were right everyone was time. jamming the super slow mos everyone's getting down having a good time everyone was dressed up just looked like a fun time but yeah that's disappointing i can't i can't the and that's almost no. I was gonna say more disappointing, but it's not more disappointing. It's almost as disappointing as the whack music that we had to listen to, which was some form of like Muzak. I don't even know what that was, but it was like this isn't even. There's no way this is the music they're dancing to. That's what got me even more bad. Yeah, the for our American listeners, it was just like generic. I don't even I know guess, how to describe sort of dance them. music. Yeah, it was not yeah, good. Yeah. You're not missing out, guys. As as much as we're putting down NSYNC, I would have gladly taken NSYNC over this. Yeah, NSYNC. Did they do Bye Bye Bye? Yeah, yep. no, that's sure. a song. An important question: Are you an NSYNC guy or Backstreet Boys? I mean, Timberlake was too much of a beast. So when they came back and they had the the whole like kind of like Nelly girlfriend when they started bopping like that. I mean, come on now. They started letting Timberlake kind of test the waters in that in that kind of hip hop y pop lane. Yeah, had to be that. Backstreet Boys, they had some, of course they had some songs, but I think, I think, you know what? That's a versus that no, actually, I don't want to even put that out there. Cause I saw a whole a whole thing about that where people were like, no, 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 no. We got to leave versus in the lane that it's in. <laughs> we can't bring it to the lane of the, the Backstreet Boys and InSync's and Britney's and all that. Stay in your lane. Make up your own thing. You know, you know what the verses we need? And it's never going to happen, but we need it. It's so obvious. Like, as soon as I say it, you're going to be like, of course. Nas Sweet. versus Jay-Z. Like, how... Like it's yeah, right there. It, the problem is they're too big, so they wouldn't do it. There's they're nothing big. to gain. They're too big, and their musical styles are too different. Like Nas doesn't really do like club jams. But I also think that Nas, and obviously I'm a Jay Z guy, mm-hmm. but I feel like Nas has more like street bangers than Jay Z. Yes. Like m- made you look. Mm-hmm. Nas is like, what do you like? I don't know what Jay plays against those tracks. And Jay obviously has like the, you know, 
it's album cuts because you got to know Jay, but those don't win you verses. I don't think. I don't no. think. I don't know. Well, but he's got like obviously like Hard Knock Life and uh, for sure. But it's a different like made you look. It's different. I mean, made you look right? is like possibly my favorite song of all time. No, <laughs> second behind Jump Around, which you know is my oh, favorite. Oh, geez. Let's move on. All <laughs> right. That that concludes this week's music talk. As soon as Jump Around is brought up, that concludes this week's music talk. Um, what else is going on in the club? <laughs> um, Fessy uh, and Corey. Hey. Fessy and Corey. Corey L. We should specify there's two Corys in the house. True. Corey That's L. Fair approaches Fessy and he's already said in confessional that he feels like of all the vets he can trust Fessy the most (laughs) and I have to say I mean not a great place to be in but I think Corey makes a good case because what he asks for is he says listen Michelle and I accept that we're going to be the houseboat we know it's coming could you please put in Huey because I think I can take Huey and in the long run, uh, like I will not, I won't say your name, which is a good deal. And like from Fessy's perspective, not that he's threatened by Huey, but Huey's got to go at some point anyway. And so why not have this happen? Right? Like there's no downside to Fessy. He's just getting the benefit of Corey making future promises. Yeah, it makes yeah. a lot of sense. No, for sure. I totally, I totally agree. It was a good game plan by Coriel. It made sense. The way he brought it up worked perfectly. Obviously, as we find out, he just lacked an execution, but there's also a lot of other things going on as well. I also like the part of him bringing up the switching of partners. Yeah. Right? Like they're going to switch smart. partners, which is very smart. They've thought through the game again. They, they had the game played down, I think. But there's mm-hmm. a lot other stuff going on in the house. Would you say? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on. First of all, we glossed over it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, clearly nighttime is the time where Emmanuel shines. <laughs> and he and Michelle are getting along great. Uh, we didn't see him bite her on the neck, but one can only assume that he did. Right? Right. I think yeah. so. I mean, he, yeah. I mean, that's the assumption for sure. That's always got to be the assumption, no? Absolutely. I have to say, we made so many vampire jokes last week and no one commented on it. Like, of all the listener feedback we got, <laughs> people just rolled with our incessant jokes <laughs> about the vampires. Actually, no, wait. Hold on. Someone messaged us. Okay. To back us up on our talk. Eric Flocker. No, that's not who it was. Uh, no, that was not who it was. Who was it? Okay. I, have I can't um, find it. Is this more vampire talk? Yes. Uh, yes. It was Jake. There you go. Jake Campos messaged me, says, love the pod. Been listening since Final Reckoning. I just want to let y'all know that y'all were right about Manuel self-identifying as a vampire. Oh. It's straight up in his Twitter handle. And sure what? enough, if you are a creature of the night and you want to follow Emmanuel on Twitter, wow. his handle is Emmanuel, only one L, vampire. One word, Emmanuel vampire. And his That's handle is, um, it is Emmanuel the vampire. So No, it is not. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm looking this up right now. Mm-hmm. He, wow, he only has 314 followers. But like no, that can't be it. That's not that's not it. That's no, gotta Cor- be a fake account. Coriel and Derek Kaczynski and the Challenge MTV follow him. So <laughs> you're looking up right now, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Hold on. What is it? What's his Twitter handle? I'm looking this up live. We're getting live reaction here, not only to the show, but to Twitter streams here. <laughs> A Manuel vampire. I'm gonna message it to you, just in case. Wow! Did you find it? Yeah. Hold on a second. This is a real thing. Yeah. No, I hold on. I mean, followed by Michelle, like actual Michelle. Yeah. 
his familiar. But I'm so a little confused. vampire. The reference. only reason, the only reason I would, I hesitated to believe it is because joined in 2021, like June 2021. Mm-hmm. Like, seems kind of odd for someone who would have been on reality TV before. But hey, am I going to really try to break down the thought process of vampire? Not really. But you know what, though? Like, different parts of the world have different social media that they stick with. Like, Live True. Journal is still big in Russia, ICQ is still big in Quebec. So, what? no, it's yeah, not. It is. So, <laughs> You know, maybe Twitter's not as big in, I believe he's, oh, he's Romanian. So, like, maybe it's not as big in Romania. Anyway, <laughs> give, give the Prince of Darkness a follow if you're on I Twitter. Emmanuel definitely Empire. will not. And thanks to Jake for the, uh, the heads up on that. I definitely will not, but okay. Just Fair don't welcome that. Just don't welcome him into your house because then he can come and go as he pleases. That's the danger of vampires. Wow. Um, Another scene in the club. Fessy and Esther get together where Fessy's telling Esther about the plan to send in Huey. And Esther replies, she just doesn't want to piss anyone off, which is uh, sort of a challenge on the show, hence the name of the show, mm -hmm. because you are going to piss someone off. You just have to choose to piss off the person that is weakest and can do the least about it. And Huey sort of fits that bill, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, he makes himself an easy target every week. He's very loud. He's very, uh, I mean, and we'll see it coming up in the deliberation. He puts a target on his back a lot with just saying too much, doing too much. And even when he's trying to not do too much, like, I mean, we'll get there, but. When you're trying to burn vote, you then burn the vote on yourself and not tell your partner. And then your partner's mad at you. So, yeah, he just makes it easy for people to uh, not be friends, if that makes sense. Yeah. The next morning, we've got Kevin, Kyle, and Devin talking, trying to hash out their beef. And what did you think of this conversation? I mean, at the end of the day, Devin's going to... Like Devin doesn't, it's not like Devin has like a lot of real, real, real options, right? Like he's here talking about how he trusts Josh, right? And how him and Josh are a team, but can you really bank on that? So it's like, you kind of got to look back at Kyle and think I got to make this work. So in that instance, I get it, but there's no way he actually trusts them. The thing is, so to me, this was a really real conversation when you have okay. two friends where there's a beef, you can tell that like Devin is legitimately shook mm -hmm. and you can tell that Kyle knows that he really fucked up and it's like, I'm, I think it was a productive conversation between the two of them, but I don't think it solved anything. Like, I think it, it no. laid the groundwork, but you yeah. know, I think I'll speak for myself. I've had conversations like that with a friend where like things aren't really resolved, but at least you both like know where the other is coming from and you have to go from there. Yeah. I think they'll be okay in the long run, but oh, Kyle blew it. Agreed. Agreed. Do you know who else blew it? Michelle in deliberation. I was unimpressed with her speech. I mean, she. Here's the thing. I like Michelle. I think Michelle is a good character. I think she could do really good things on the challenge. She clearly gets reality TV mm -hmm. and maybe a little too much mm. because, you know, at a certain point, if I wanted, if I was one of the other people, I'd kind of be questioning her, how genuine she is. Do you know what I mean? She, she comes out and she's saying, we're cool with going in, but we want to go against people who haven't gone in yet. We've earned our way. And I actually applaud Coriel for coming out and saying the real, like mm -hmm. some of you have had a way cushier time here than we have. And if we're going to keep going in, maybe you guys should have to go in too. Mm -hmm. It's awkward, but he's right. And I agree with what he's saying. And then the only way it got worse was because, as mentioned, your man's Huey. 
Huey just blew it. So Huey has a really emotional response to essentially being called out by Coriel and Michelle. And he also reveals that last time he voted for himself and Ashley to go in. Yeah. Which is a blunder on at least three levels. First of all, it tells everyone else in that room that Huey does not know what he's doing. Yeah. Second of all, this was news to Ashley who rightly says like a burn vote never works. And if you're burning votes, you're putting a target on your back. And this guy just outed himself burn yeah. doing a burn vote. And also the lack of communication is also deeply unsettling. Like Ashley, it's not like he's partnered with Gabo who doesn't know what's going on. Like Ashley is a political player who yeah. will freely give you advice as to how you should be playing this game politically, especially when you're partnered. Like just I like I thought uh, Michelle overplayed her hand in her little speech. I thought Coriel represented their partnership better. But yeah. good gravy, what is Huey thinking? Not a lot, not a lot. I don't know what his game plan was, but I feel like again, even in the conversation he had after the deliberation with Ashley, he's trying to make TV. Yeah. So he comes back again and, you know, the tears come out and actually I'm so sorry. And that's not what I meant to do. And this and that. And I might throw myself in. And it's like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, again, doing too much. We always have episodes like this. There's probably two or three episodes that always come through for the challenge where everyone's just doing too much. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know who's not doing too much is Josh who's speaking to Fessy and says, <laughs> we should put in Huey and Bettina. Yeah. And Fessy is like, no, I want Amber B. I just don't trust her. And like, Josh is like, no, man, like for sure. Huey's the guy like, no doubt. Do Bettina. Like we've got her partner. Corey is fine. They're not really vibing as partners. So, yeah. You could make the argument to both Ashley and Corey, we did you guys a favor because Huey and Bettina, you're not really clicking with. We got to get rid of these rookies anyway. Mm -hmm. Like it's That means it's four rookies once again. Like this starts up a war. Amber, although is not your closest ally, Fessy, like she's still at least ostensibly on your side. Like you have her for now. Like... It's but what happens when we get to the actual layer when it comes to nomination time, Sheldon? Well, I'll say this first before we're going. Well, Fessy, a, a big fight breaks up. But I think a key note here is, and I'm getting the tweet, so I don't get it wrong. But our girl Amanda on Twitter last night, first off, she's teasing the fact that she's going to go live. She's like, I got to mm -hmm. go live to, to give you all the real tea. Of what's going on but she also said uh fessy didn't want to say Bettina Bettina's name for another reason with eye emojis oh so yeah and then uh josh commented and said go to bed amanda in all caps. <laughs> and then she said you better sh or you're next <laughs> And Amber joins in with just a laughing and crying emoji and the coffin emoji. So, yeah, there's more to this. I'm sure that we'll find out the streets, the, the, the Twitter streets will tell us soon enough. But yes, we knew this was a big deal because as the we get down there, the decisions are made. As soon as Fessy starts talking, giving the BS speech, Josh is like, change your mind, change your mind, change your mind, change your mind. Like how awkward I've never seen anything like that before, but I feel like every season that Josh is on, there's something else where it's like, I've never seen that before. <laughs> so Josh in this moment, Fessy is clearly about to pick Amber B and Josh goes Josh where he's yelling. He's making a scene. He's doing the biggest hold me back ever. I love that he did a hold me back and the people that hold him back are Ashley and Amber. <laughs> right. Like Corey, Corey does get down there 
eventually, eventually half-hearted and, and security gets down there but like with all due respect to ashley and amber who are both excellent athletes they're also giving up like 60 pounds to josh yeah at least totally it makes no sense it really made made no sense <laughs> and and what sorry i should clarify what i'm saying makes no sense what makes no sense is fessy's move here yeah like i still don't get it josh's outburst we've come to get used to that by now josh is going to do that probably twice a season depending on how long he stays on said season Mm-hmm. But Fessy's move makes no <coughs> sense at all. And also, if you were going to do that, I mean, you could have told her. You could have done, you could have told Josh. There's so many things you could have done because that argument was going to happen regardless. Mm-hmm. But he had his mind made up that he needed to take out Amber B. And I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. It was just the weirdest thing ever. And Casey only tells Josh to, to calm down. So yeah. I don't get it. I guess Casey was on board with this too, which also doesn't make any sense to me. But it, does this end the VET Alliance? I don't think it ends the VET Alliance because I don't think it's a, like, I think all the other vets were like, hey, this is the end of the Big Brother Alliance and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it though? Because Josh is just going to go back to Fessy, isn't he? Uh, he could throw in his lot with Devin and Kyle, though. He like could. they they showed us so much Devin and Kyle stuff that you know we're going to be revisiting what that dynamic is like. And we also saw in the club that Josh was giving Devin advice about ditching Kyle. True. So I could see Josh and Devin, and uh, you know we skipped over it in the club. Josh and Devin were saying, like, listen, they're saying this to each other. The only way either one of us is going to win this is if we're facing each other in the final. We don't want CT. We don't want Fessy. We don't want Jeremiah. Yeah. And they're right. <laughs> like, that is the correct analysis. Um, also, Amber was rightly heated. Like, she just got, like, past this beef. And, yeah, like, the the previous stab wound in her back had just started to scab over. And Fessy is just like, oh, here you go. Ah, there's another butcher knife to the back. And had a good conversation, what she thought with uh, Casey, where she said all the right things. So it's not like it's anything that Amber did to make Fessy not trust her. Mm -hmm. right? So it's just all super weird. But I will say the funniest thing is still Josh waiting on someone to hold them back. That was the funniest thing ever to witness. It's I, just like, we've seen this so many times and every time it'll be funny to me. I respectfully disagree. The funniest thing in this entire fight okay. was TJ taking out his cell phone yeah. and starting to just do a scroll. That's you know, good. That was pretty good. And, and eventually I'll- TJ just saying, okay, stop talking. Yeah. Stop talking. I, I noted it down. Please stop talking. Everyone stop talking. And then they all keep going. And he goes, hey, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think good. that series of lines from TJ is my line of the episode. Oh, okay. I give, I'll give my line of the episode right now because it fits as well. It's, it's uh, Fessy is still messy. Yeah. Fessy is still messy. So Amber B ends up going down. She and Huey have to team up for down to the wire. So your partner and you are handcuffed to a pole that has like a, a bracket looped around a long pole and you have to like work it around the pole, get to one end, pick up a key, bring it back to unlock your, uh, your pole. Mm-hmm. Pretty straightforward. I'll tell you, who did you, th- well, let me ask, who did you think was going to win? I honestly had no idea. I didn't have a pick going in because it was such a random um, event. And I also thought that I didn't know how Amber was going to react, but I could bet that Corey L and um, I was going to call him Gabo, but Huey, I could predict that both of them would struggle because here's the thing. You're going to get stuck at some point. How are you going to react to it? 
that was going to be the, the deciding factor in this elimination. And I thought Huey and Coriel would both have the moment where they struggle with that. So that was kind of my thing where I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put down originally that I thought Coriel and Michelle were uh, going to win just because they knew going in that they were going to compete. So they already had time to like be cool, calm, and collected about it. I thought they'd have better communication because they've been partners for at least a week now. And I also thought that Huey obviously gets flustered somewhat easily. We've seen that consistently. And I thought that they would, Huey and Amber both being rattled and thrown in last minute, although Huey probably saw it coming. I thought that they would be too flustered to communicate, didn't know each other well. But they actually come flying out of the gate and do really well, whereas it's Coriel and Michelle who struggle. Yeah. At one point, Coriel's carabiner, which is part of like the contraption they're hooked up to, gets stuck. And Michelle asks production for help. And Huey, who's mad that he's been thrown in, starts chirping them and gets into an argument prompting CT to say in confessional that Huey's problem is that he has the attention span of a five-year-old. Yeah, it's and, tough to argue, no? Like, yeah. I've never seen two people argue with each other in the middle of an elimination. One that requires a lot of focus and communication. Like, you should be talking to your partner as you make your way through. Yeah. Speaking of Huey's short attention span, your guy drops the key and doesn't even notice. Right? So... Here's the thing. I thought at that point, I still thought they were going to win just because Huey, to me, to me, Amber was too calm about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I know I just talked about the fact, how do you handle the adversity or whatever? But I feel like if he dropped it and it was like that far away or she was that worried about it, or maybe Corey and, uh, and Michelle were this that far behind. But either way, Amber was mad calm about this. So that made me think, okay, well, everything must be fine. Yeah. And Huey, you know, reaches over with his foot, drags his foot back over, gets the key, and all is well. I'll say this. If they had noticed a minute later than they did, they would have been screwed. Like, Huey was able to reach it, but only just. If they were... Yeah even slightly further along, it would have been a real problem for them. This was expertly edited together. I thought it was really well done. I wonder how close it really was, though. Because when they, when um, Huey and Amber win, they do win, yeah. they went to some lengths to not show us where Corey, Al, and Michelle were. Like I think this was pretty close to a blowout. I think they just really played up that dropped key for dramatic effect. Ah. But you're the TV guy. What did you think? Yeah, that could be very easily done. Because the one thing I did think about was the shot of the key in the sand. I was obviously like, oh, that's a nice fake shot. <laughs> right? So obviously it'd be very easy to coordinate that. Um, I didn't watch the end of the, uh, like I didn't watch the entire after show thing, which I don't think is something they would actually say in the after show, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I mean, there definitely is a world where let's say the carabiner was that stuck. So they're like, okay, well we can't end it like this. Cause that would yeah. just be a horrible ending. So let's make some type of drama to make you guys win. Cool. Maybe there's that. Yeah. I don't know. It's definitely possible. And I wouldn't put it past them. So. Well, I'm saying that, like, I'm sure Huey really did drop the key. I'm just saying, like, I think it was like a 10 second setback where they said, be like, oh, oh I dropped the I key. Got you. And then he reached and, like, life goes on. Whereas they played it out like, this is the turning point. Like, Michelle and Corey are going to rally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, I think I it was, you. I think it was a foregone conclusion. But there was a lot of hurt feelings afterwards. First of all, Amber comes out <laughs> hot and yells, fuck big brother. Yep. Fessy is still messy. Don't trust mm -hmm. this guy. Huey goes after Coriel. Yeah. 
like chest to chest and Corey shoves him, TJ tells them, like once they're all settled down, TJ tells them off, says the women behaved with grace, but singles out Huey for his behavior and then tells Corey that he never wants to see him lay hands on someone again. And Corey and Huey in confessional talk about how Huey was disappointed in Corey and Corey is ultimately disappointed in himself because they thought they would have each other as fellow gay men and like try to elevate each other, lift each other up. Yeah. And then Corey, you know, basically politics to get Huey down there. Um, was, I was, go ahead. No, I was just going to say it was interesting to see Corey L have that reaction, right? Where he essentially calls himself out in saying mm. that he did what he always gets mad at the rest of the world yeah. doing, right? He did the same thing to Huey. And, you know, he did to Huey what the rest of the world does to them as gay men. And I was like, oh, that's an it. Like, I never mm -hmm. thought of it like that. You know what I mean? But it was interesting to hear him break that down. And you could see why he was so emotional about it. Um, yeah. And, you know, he on the after show, the part I did see, he did say that uh, he did say to Huey, I mean, I don't regret putting you in because I do think that I could beat you one on one in any physical competition. Mm -hmm. So that part doesn't change. And yeah, I think those two things are allowed to be right because there, yeah. we talk about this all the time where there is a factor of some of these people on the show where you're thinking, well, how is this going to look on TV? Right? Like that is a thing that happens from time to time. Mm -hmm. So that part is interesting. And, you know, at the end of the day, he has to feel really dumb for just begging to go against this person and then losing. It's not a good look. Not a not good a look at all. Um, so th there are some moves made afterwards. Lots Both of moves. Huey and Amber agree that they're not going to be partners. <laughs> Huey, I note down, Huey should definitely move on from Ashley. Ashley looks at him when he's like sort of scanning the crowd and she goes, I love you to death. I've got your back, but no. <laughs> so Huey chooses Nani. Yep. Josh tells Amber uh, and frankly, the entire house tells Amber, choose Devin because that puts Ashley and Josh together and it puts mm -hmm. Emmy and Gabo together, which is smart because Emmy and Gabo are not playing a good game and it creates a new all rookie team that they can all pick on next week. Great gameplay mm -hmm. for all involved. We have Great. a listener question though. Okay. Unbent Flow wants to know. Which is worse, the Big Brother Alliance running the season and having to watch Josh and Fessy all season, or the Alliance imploding and watching tons of Josh and Fessy drama for a few weeks? Sophie's choice. What do you think is worse? Um, what's worse would be watching Josh and Fessy run the house yeah. for the whole season, but I also know that that's not really a likely scenario as mentioned i know fessy said it during this episode you know josh is a smart player and he did uh what did he say he did win uh big brother yeah and i was kind of like mm, yeah i always got to remind the listeners in case you aren't familiar with josh's work josh won one of the worst seasons i've ever seen in terms of how the outcome happened it basically there was one guy who ran the whole house, played the game perfectly, ended up in the final with Josh just because Josh was the worst player. He was the most annoying player. He was such a disruptor in the house. He was the worst. He was super annoying, yelling at people, banging pots and pans, waking people up in the morning for no reason, just to be a jerk. So people were bringing him all the way towards the finals because they knew nobody would vote for him until they did. And that's how Josh won because the people were too salty that they got duped by the other guy who played the most perfect game possible that Josh ended up winning. <laughs> I have to ask who killed it for you this week, Sheldon. Do you know what, who actually killed it for me in this, this season? I got to give it up. I was, I'm making a late audible. 
Okay. Because at first I was going to go in one direction, but I'm going to make an audible at this point. I'm going to go as my phone continues to ring. I don't know if you can hear that. A little. Well, either way, what? I'll leave that in. <laughs> as here's the thing. I'm going to go with Amber. Oh, okay. The reason I'm going to go with Amber is because she did everything right. Mm. Whether or not she does trust Fessy, she said all the right things to Casey. And they still tried to backdoor her. And she just went down. She had to be partnered with Huey, which is not an easy thing. And if you remember, in the middle of that elimination, while Huey's having his little Huey moment, Amber's the one that says, no, 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 stop. Focus, focus. We need to go. And Mm -hmm. not a lot of partners would have been able to act that calmly Mm -hmm. to Huey and be able to deal with Huey in an elimination like that. And I just think for her to be backdoored the way that she was Mm -hmm. is just horrible. So to come back into the house and to, you would assume, be in the majority because all those other vets got to be looking at Fessy now sideways. Everybody in the house has to be looking at Fessy sideways. So for you to come back and be an added number that now will not let Fessy win. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but Josh is my MVP. Oh, wow. Okay. Is this the first time Josh has ever been? He, we're saying Josh is the MVP. Probably. It's got to be right. Probably. But like, here's the, here's the truth. He and Amber played, to your point, played really well all episode. He played, he kept his cool. They won their heat. In I left that part out. Yeah. The, in the daily competition. And that was legitimate. And they were in the tougher heat where they were like, it wasn't the veterans all working together necessarily, right? I mean, they were all targeting Michelle and Corey, but like it wasn't the same situation in the second heat. Yeah. He also was unbelievably the voice of reason for a lot of people. He was the voice of reason with Devin in the club when they're talking about Kyle. He was the voice of reason with Fessy. Yeah. I know his reaction when Fessy uh was clearly about to name amber was over the top but josh was right and there's also you know obviously josh is really dramatic and we always rag on him for that but in that moment it was important to show the house how he was not with fessy mm-hmm. it was important that amber saw that it was important that everyone in the house said could say josh was legitimately not supportive of that decision and it, and he wasn't like he wasn't lying like that wasn't it was performative but like his route was correct yeah. and even the advice he gave to amber to pick devin was smart like he ju- this was the smartest episode i've ever seen josh play and as much I as he that. bugs me and annoys me he, I can't deny he was on point. He was on point this episode. I agree with everything he just said. I actually agree with him. I think yeah. just it was so foreign to me to ever consider giving Josh the MVP. That, that's the only reason I didn't think of it. But I'm with you, man. I agree with everything you just said. Yep. Where can people find you on social media? You can find me on Twitter at Shell Alexander. You could find me on Instagram, Sheldon Alexander. Like and subscribe to the pod wherever you get your podcast, people. And like and subscribe to the YouTube page. See our handsome faces, you know? Say what's up. Bless us with a like. That's how you su- that's how you support the pod. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at J Chidley Hill. And until next week, this is You Killed It. You killed it.